Hey guys, my name is Akash Thakar and I'm the sound designer for Hyperlight Drifter. What I want to show you guys in today's video is all about iteration on certain sound effects. So showing you how sound effects can evolve from a very basic version 1 all the way to a crazy, completely different in some cases, version 10 or even beyond. This is completely normal for game development. In fact, I am sure I'm going to hit version 20 on some of these sound effects before the game is done. And again, completely normal, to be expected. You can't really nail everything on the first try, so what you have to do is send off what you have to the developers, the team, and kind of see what everyone thinks, see how it feels in the game, and see how it works. And once you figure that out, you can kind of make the tweaks that you need to, and from there you just tweak and tweak and tweak until it sounds perfect or it feels perfect and it just works in the game as it should. Now, like I said, nothing I do in general is perfect on the first try, so I'm going to be showing you some of the favorite effects that some of you guys have been telling me about for the game, such as the sword, some of the health effects, and some others that have more iterations associated with them than probably any other sound in the game. And I'll be walking you through what they sounded like at the very beginning, when I first started on the project, all the way through to what they sound like at the time of this recording. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's take a look at the sword sound effects. I've gotten a lot of requests on how these were made, so I aim not to disappoint. You can see here we have three sword sound effects, light, medium, and heavy. And I'll walk you through each one and the layers that are associated with each one and how they evolved over time and what's currently in the game right now. So over here, we have sword light made up of these layers here. I'll solo each of them individually and then I'll play the final versions. Some nice kind of metallic, really modified wobbly sort of stuff there to add some character. Over here we have something similar, a bit of a jingle sound to add more unique sound effects to the underlying sword. I really like using subtle effects like that on all of my sound effects because it adds a lot more uniqueness to everything I make. Next up we have a very generic honestly sounding sword slash sound. The interesting thing though I did here was I used a speed up fade in. You can see this is kind of an orange fade in effect right here. And in Logic you can do that where it sounds like it's a tape being sped up. And it adds a really nice build up to it as the effect gets played. Next up we have some electric buzz here. You can hear that it adds just a bit of a sci-fi element to it. I keep it relatively quiet but it does add to the final character of the sound. Some distorted, pitch shifted, kind of lightsaber buzz that I got from a fluorescent light. And these last three are whooshes of different varieties. I love using whooshes in combat effects because it adds a lot of character and brings more impact to that sound. Now, these layers make up the final version, but I'll play you version 1, 2, 3, and finally 4, so you can hear how it started. So here's version 1. Mostly a generic sword with a little bit of cool underlying elements, but it didn't work with the game. The sword isn't made of metal, so we needed something that sounded more unique to the game. So more electric buzz getting there, but still has some more metallic elements. And in version 3, what I decided to do was pitch down the sword metallic elements and make it more sci-fi. <laughs> Added a lot more electric buzz to it and made the metallic sounds more impactful and thumpy, but eventually we ended up almost moving the metallic sound completely altogether for version 4, which I think sounds better. So compared, I'll just go through all of them again. So all sound effects evolve a lot over time, and this is completely normal. Honestly, this is version 4, and that's what's in the game right now. By the time the game comes out, we might be on version 10. Who knows? 
And that's actually the fun part because everything evolves so much as time goes on. So we'll take a quick look at Sword Medium as well, which is very, very similar to Sword Light. It just has some more layers to give it more impact and more oomph. So I'll play you each of these layers individually so you can hear how they work. More whooshes. Now you can hear this one has some more bass and more thud associated with it, which is why I threw it in with Sword Medium and not with Sword Light. So it just has a little bit of differentiation to it. More of that lightsaber hum with a little bit more reverb on it. Again, more impact. I don't use this layer. I ended up cutting it out so it's muted. Some more of that metallic sword sound and goodness. And underneath it is the exact same sound, but modified. So together they create a pretty cool effect. Now I'll walk you through each of the versions. Again, our final version of Sword Medium as of this recording is version 4, but I'll play you version 1 first. So again, too metallic, too generic, and we moved on from there to... Still, again, too much metallic elements to it, but it's getting there. There's more electric buzz, there's more of the sci-fi elements in there, and in Sword version 3... Pitch down metallic elements, but it wasn't quite there. And lastly, version 4, where we mostly removed them. And I time stretched it a little bit too to add a little bit more space when you do the animation, just to have it have more impact whenever you do that second attack, that sword medium. Now, Sword Heavy is really interesting because, as you can see, it's made up of a lot more layers and their timing is very different as well. I added a lot of different elements and staggered all of these layers so that there's more impact, and I'll show you what that means. I'll play each of these layers individually again and then walk you through it. So, so far, some similar elements to the other swords. Some electronic sounds add a little bit more impact to it. Now this is where it gets interesting. Lots of impact, some cool sci-fi effects built up to make the end product sound a lot more heavy and a lot more impactful. Some cool, awesome, sort of bubbly effects here. And I use Zebra, Zebrify down here to add some cool effects to it. That's just a modified sword that's been time shrunk to a ridiculous degree. Adds kind of some crazy artifacts to it. More of that lightsaber hum. Bit of a blaster laser sort of sound being fired, but time shrunk like crazy because I didn't want the song to sound to go on for too long and some more of that kind of laser blaster sort of sound just to add more of that sci-fi element to it. And again, more of the electronic buzz, that lightsaber hum that I got from recording a fluorescent light, and of course, whooshes. Metallic sword effects, whooshes and thumps, and this guy, which I love. Big, heavy, impactful railgun sort of effect. Now I'll walk you through each of these versions to show you how they evolved. Version 5 is our current version as of this recording, but here's version 1. So you can hear there's a little bit of a build-up before you strike, which is what I wanted. And that's why these effects are staggered like they are. They don't all happen at the same time. I wanted a build-up before the sword lands in the enemy to give it more power. Version 2. Now version 3. Getting much closer. Lots more power, lots more impact. Version 4 here. 
Awesome. Very, very, very close. And version 5... Almost the same as version 4. Except it lasts just a little bit longer to time better to the animation. And that's the gist of how I made the swords. Honestly, this was a lot of trial and error. Tons of trial and error to get this stuff to sound like it does. But eventually, through playing around and experimentation, which is really the name of the game, these things came out and they sound pretty good and work in the game just fine. Next up, we'll take a look at the dash sound effect. Now, the dash happens when the drifter basically does his little jump effect and can move very, very quickly from point A to point B using it. So we needed something that sounded both iconic, but that didn't get annoying after you used it a bunch because you're pressing the dash button all the time when you're playing this game. It's a very fast-paced game, and you're going to be hearing the sound effect a lot. So like before, I'll play the layers for you and then show you how it evolved over time and how it changed. So that's really the core of it. That's kind of the bassy whoosh that we ended up going with. Now, the sound itself isn't anything much. I'll turn off all the effects here so you can hear it. It's really just a modified, heavily modified drill being turned on and off. And by using the Delay Designer and Logic, Bit Crusher, the Ubic plugins, Sound Shifter Pitch, just some pitch shifting, and some more ubic goodness, it turns into this. So that's the core of it, but let's move on to the other layers so you can hear how they all combine together. So that's kind of the effect I wanted for his cape kind of flapping around after he does the dash or during, because you can see that it's a little staggered from the kind of meat of the dash effect here. And third up, we have... So I wanted kind of a hissy electronic effect as if his gear is kind of powering up and allowing him to do that crazy dash move that he can do. Next up, more of that hummy lightsaber electric-y goodness. Again, lots of delay designer, and in this case, some reverb using my favorite plugin, my reverb, favorite reverb plugin, EOS, EOS by Audio Damage. And here we have another cape cloth sort of whoosh that doesn't have a lot of effects on it, actually. I just time stretched it so it sounds really weird and added a bit crusher on top. And that's really it. That makes up the dash, but I'll share with you how it evolved over time. We have nine versions of this dash effect. So here's version one. Pretty sci-fi sounding, but when playing the sound over and over in the game, it didn't really fit, didn't have a lot of impact, and it lasted just a bit too long. Here's version two. So you can hear that the bassy sort of whoosh, this first layer is in there now. It's already getting closer, but there's not enough tone to it. There's not enough middle ground tonality to it that makes it sound almost kind of musical. So I added that in the future versions. Here I just made it more bassy to see if that would work and it turns out that didn't work out. So version 4, I add the tonal elements to it which you can hear and this makes up the majority of the dash sound now. That kind of tonal higher pitched wind up sound. But it still needed some evolution, so we went to version 5. Just a little bit less of that electronic hum, and it sounds a lot cleaner. And we used version 5 for a very long time, actually, almost an entire year. But upon playing the game a bunch, it turns out that this was a bit too bassy and got in the way of the other sound effects in the music if you mashed the dash button, which you are constantly doing. So I went in another direction to see how we can fix that. And what I did was really tone it down. So you can hear that with version six. So version six gets rid of that tonality, which turns out didn't work so well. It wasn't unique, it wasn't iconic. So threw it back in for version seven. 
and made it really, really bassy and really, really heavy without being super overpowering. Again, that didn't quite work, so we ended up on version 8. More cape whoosh, but less tonality. Again, not perfect, and we ended up on version 9 with this, which sounds pretty similar to the rest, but is a little more subtle. So more cape whoosh, that tone is still in there, but it's a lot quieter, has some bass to it, but isn't super overpowering and won't really get in your way when you're mashing the dash button a whole bunch. So this is kind of how a lot of the sound effects in this game and basically every other game I've worked on evolve. It takes some iteration, it takes a lot of trial and error, and it takes some failure to find out that perfect sound in the end. So next up, we're going to look at the health sound effect because that evolved a ton over the course of this game. All right, let's finish up by taking a look at the health pickup effects. So the health effects went through a ton of iterations. In fact, we're on version 10 right now, and I'm going to share with you version 4, 5, 6, and lastly 10. There's a lot of iteration in between, but frankly there wasn't enough evolution that it'd be worth showing you, and it'd be really boring to see the minute changes that I did. So I'm going to share with you the bigger changes, and you can hear the big differences from version 4 all the way through 10. So let's start with version 4, and I'll solo each of these three layers for you individually and show you why I have two exports of it here. So first, let's start with layer 1. Layer 2. Layer 3. And hear it all together. So you can hear that I took the same sound effect and just pitched the second one up a little bit more and placed it off the timeline so that one was played right after the other. We tried this in game and it was a little cheesy and it didn't really work, so we wanted something a lot darker. So that's what we ended up doing with version 5 here. We added a breath effect and some pleasant kind of jingle effects to let you know that what you did was good, what you did was get health, and that's always a good thing, but it still sounds a lot darker. So I'll play each layer for you individually here. Some cool breath effects. Some nice whooshes, always, always useful. and some jingles to let you know that what you did was good. And lastly, just a little extra breath to add more impact to that initial breath sound. And let's play it all together so you can hear the final result for version 5. That again didn't work quite so well in game, the breath sounded really out of place with the rest, and it just didn't work out. So we went on to version 6 down here. Now version 6 you can see I did something here by using an instrument, you can see the MIDI data down here, and I used an instrument for this effect. This first layer here I ended up scrapping and not using at all, so I just used a FM8, which is by Native Instruments, instrument, a synth, and tried to make something, and here is what the result was. So that's the sound that FM8 made, a synthesizer patch that I made in FM8, and again, too bright, too tonal, too musical, didn't work for this game in particular, and after tons of iteration of making it sound really dark and kind of bloodborne-y, we ended up with version 10, and there's a lot of layers, as you can see here, for version 10, and I'll play each of them for you individually, and then play you the final result. So, some good stabbing, blood-gushy sounds. Of course, whooshes. I think that was a metal chain that I took and pitched down and time-stretched. More metallic shings that have been pitched down and reverberated. 
more of that kind of liquid sound. So still a little bit of tonal quality in it, but it's much more subtle than in the other ones. Little bit more of that liquid sound just to punctuate that you're stabbing yourself with basically a vial of health giving elixir. So a mixture of me breathing and some liquidy sounds that I made. Now this one I'm really proud of. This is just a plastic bag. And I wanted something with a kind of a nice bright impact. So I just took a plastic shopping bag and whipped it around and it adds a lot to the final sound. Just some water dripping on the floor, but reverberated so it sounds unique and cool. Some more water dunking effects done in my sink. And that's the real meat of it. Honestly, I think I re remember combining a whole bunch of kitchen utensils and banging on stuff into this one layer and then adding a ton of reverb and pitch shifting to it. I can't remember what exactly I used for this one effect down here, but the end result is this. And just like the heavy sword, you can see that these sound effects are a little staggered from one another, so it has more impact. There's a little bit of a build before you finally get that health, so there's more impact, there's more oomph to it, and it sounds a lot darker than version 4, where we came from. So that's actually it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, send me an email, whatever. You can find all of that info in the section below here on YouTube. And I'll talk to you guys next time.